That was a dog. <laughs> this is Digby. He may be small, but he's a big part of this family and Grady's best bud. They're constantly playing on the floor or on the sofa. Oh my goodness! Sometimes Grady will fall asleep on the sofa and Digby will nuzzle up next to him and they love to watch TV together. So lots of uh, toddler time with your dog. Yeah, he's definitely part of the family. Good job. The perfect pop to help us with another marketplace test. This is the powder. We're applying a harmless powder that glows under UV light. Good boy. To show you how a popular pet product could affect you and your family. Okay. See you inside. About half of us share our home with a cat or a dog, and we've heard from a lot of you with concerns about all kinds of flea treatments. Something is in that product that is wreaking havoc. I know of at least three pets seriously sick. The damage on the dog's skin was truly disgusting. How do the manufacturers live with themselves? We learn people across North America have been reporting injuries to their pets for years caused by flea collars. Rashes, burns, and worse, dozens and dozens of deaths. Some of the big names behind those collars, Heart, Zodiac, and Sargent. Makes you wonder what's in them. To get some answers, we head to San Francisco and the offices of NRDC, the Natural Resources Defense Council. Public health scientist Miriam Rotkin Elman studied flea collars and what's inside them. I see them for dogs. Exactly. For cats. Lots oh. of different brands that have the chemicals that we are worried about. Worried about two powerful pesticides, Propoxer and Tetrachlorvinfos, found in flea collars. Both linked to serious health problems and considered unsafe, says this scientist. More and more science has shown that either prenatally, so exposure to pregnant women, or to young children, low levels of these pesticides can affect the way the nervous system develops. It can actually affect a toddler's nervous system. Exactly, that you may not see until the toddler gets a little older, and they start trying, you know, learning disabilities, delays in motor development, um, hyperactivity, behavioral problems, have all been linked to this type of pesticide. Dad. So how much of those two pesticides in flea collars could we be exposed to? That's where Digby and our powder test come in. What do you think about the fact that two very powerful pesticides are allowed to exist in the home? I'm shocked. It's really surprising. It's not scientific, but we want to see how much pesticide the family could come into contact with if Digby wore a flea collar. Good boy. Remember that powder we applied? It's easy to see on Digby, but will it transfer onto the furniture, toys, or family? Especially Grady. How much it transfers could be a problem, says Miriam Rockin Elman. She's done her own scientific test, looking into how much pesticide gets on to pets wearing flea collars. So after three days, you wipe down the pet, you sent that wipe to a lab, what did you find? We found much higher levels than we expected. And when we put those numbers into sort of standard calculations for what a kid could get exposed to, we found levels that exceeded what the, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency actually said was safe. So how much powder did Digby's family come into contact with? Time to see our results. Under my UV flashlight, the powder we applied to Digby will glow anywhere it's spread. We find it Look at that. on the furniture, right into the corner. The parents, imagine if that was a toxic pesticide. Under your chin. This is going to be on national TV. You're pretty covered. Whoa. All over Grady's toys. One of Grady's favorite treats. Wow, that toy is covered. And worst of all, Oh yeah, look at your hands. On Grady. That is very worrisome. If this was a real pesticide, not only um, can somebody put their hands in their mouths or touch something else or get it all over their house, the pesticides can actually be absorbed through the skin and enter the body that way. And honestly, with a pesticide, it doesn't take very much um, to cause effects that could stay with that kid for their whole lives. 
We tell Grady's dad, Frank Bassett, about the potential risks. I think this stuff needs to be off the market if it truly is as dangerous as it appears. So you think that this chemical should be banned immediately? I think so, yes. Just gone? Just gone. We want Health Canada's take on why these flea collars are still on the market. They say they're phasing out ones with Propoxer. In three years, the ones with Tetrachlorvinfos will remain on store shelves. As for the big flea collar companies, Zodiac didn't respond, while Sargent says it's following regulation and will be discontinuing the product. Hartz tells us the number of adverse reactions from their product is low, but adds it's constantly working to surpass our own standards for safety. Hey, which way are we going to go? Left or right? Digby and his family are glad the test is done. Well done, Digby! <laughs> oh, <cool>. Gentle, gentle. <laughs> But till there are stricter rules for flea collars, a safer way to keep fleas from becoming a real itch, brush and bathe your pet regularly. Any shampoo will do the trick. Vacuum lots and wash your pet's bedding. And keep grass and shrubs where your pet hangs out cut short. Marketplace is taking a break over the holidays, but we're already working on new investigations for 2015. People have gotten so used to the taste of a processed product that that's actually what they prefer. We're revealing juicy secrets about a popular breakfast drink. I'm angry. It, I feel duped. Searching the country for expensive ambulance fees. And we'll tell you how to avoid a sneaky charge when you travel. People are being hoodwinked into paying something they don't have to pay. I just don't understand how they can even get away with that. Those stories and a lot more starting January 9th. Meantime, stay connected with us on Facebook and Twitter. From our family to yours, happy holidays.